Way too many times in my life I have been overly hyped for games. Destiny 2, Anthem, Avengers, Watch Dogs 2 and 3, Godfall, The Division, Cyberpunk, to name a few. Now I have kind of learned from past mistakes as to not take all what I see too seriously as a lot of the time more money is spent on advertising when it comes to games and building up that hype train than is spent on actual game production. Not entirely true but it always seems that way. In April comes a game I am interested in. Over the past couple of months I have though been keeping quiet and watching what's been going on. How's it going guys, my name's DPJ and if you enjoyed this video leaving a like really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more be sure to subscribe. So if even in the past you've been a fan of let's say Destiny 1 and you've always taken interest and sometimes gambled on other looters which have always looked pretty interesting games such as the Division, Anthem, Destiny 2 even, Godfall and many other games which have come along and disappointed well, there's another one on the way, and it's a game known as Outriders. Outriders is an upcoming cooperative role playing third person looter shooter developed by People Can Fly and published by Square Enix. It is set to be released in April, but there will be a demo before that. This is a game which I will add seemingly takes the best parts of games like Destiny, Warframe, Anthem and The Division and rolls them up into one. It has multiple different character classes so to speak which offer different elements and abilities. It has incredible and I mean incredible looking and designed loot in those also familiar rarities. And normally we can only wear one golden item at a time, ha not within this game. It has a quite in-depth character customization system which you can even use after you've created your character to change his appearance even more so later on in the game. It has vendors you can work for and level up. It has monster hunts. It has a vault like system to store loot and transfer loot across characters. It has hidden puzzles and missions for secret loot. It has endgame. It has grind. It has a great leveling system, transmog. I mean you name it this game offers it. All those features let's say you've wanted Destiny to bring, this has them. And also did I mention cross platform play and next gen support right off the bat. Outriders offers it all. Now one thing this game isn't and it's put some people off, this game isn't a live service game much like Destiny. But in my opinion that isn't a bad thing at all. In fact I think that's a good thing knowing what I know from previous games and it will help in terms of future content for this game. I just hope at the same time there is enough in the base game to keep us going. But I'm sure there is. Now I ain't gonna jump deep into Outriders water, but I do feel people are sleeping on this game. Many people are overlooking it, writing it off before it's even started. And this is thanks due mainly to overhyped games in the past. And you can't blame people for thinking this way. Well people can fly, I'll give you the chance to play this game for free. With a demo which comes out towards the end of February. You don't even have to pre-order the game, either people to play it so you can't be caught out there. And did I mention, if you enjoy the game, your progress transfers over into the main game when it releases in April. So you may as well check it out. Now honestly, I was sold when I saw the armor sets and weapon designs. I mean, you think Destiny weapons look exotic? Check some of these out. But what I will do guys, if I've even slightly piqued your interest in this game, is showcase to you some gameplay narrated telling you everything you need to know. As well as showcasing what this game offers in terms of end game. So enjoy that. Also guys, because this game offers so much, I will drop timestamps down below if you're interested in things like crafting, legendary upgrading, endgame and so much more. Then you will find pinned at the top of the comment section and linked within the video description. But yeah, Outriders might be a game you see me covering in the near future. So stay tuned for it. We'll just see how it goes. But on that note, the end of the video has arrived. If you enjoyed it, leaving a like really helps out. Tell me your initial thoughts on Outriders down below. And hopefully, guys, I'll see you on that next one. Outriders is massive, both in terms of game length and the numbers of hours you'll be able to pour into it, and the physical distance you'll traverse over the course of the story. So today we're excited to show you more of the journey and structure of Outriders, how you move about the game and how the various features, systems and story all come together.
In last month's broadcast, we explored the first city, the area of Enoch first settled by the refugees of Earth. Everything from the section of the game unfolded here, in this area of the map. The first city sits within a larger area of colonized Enoch, which you can see here. Here, humans have made a life, as best as they can, and built cities, strongholds, factories, and mines as they try to survive. This is where the Outriders are first reawoken from cryosleep and where your first hours in the game are spent. Humanity has always struggled to leave this place. With the raging anomaly storms and monsters preventing further colonization of the planet, pushing society back to the Dark Ages. As you will see though, there is a whole lot more to Enoch. As an Outrider, you're one of the few powerful enough to leave humanity's broken settlements and journey out across this hostile planet. But what does it mean in actuality? Outriders takes advantage of a hub and spoke structure, connecting busy, settled areas, the hubs, with combat arenas and free roam areas, the spokes. The main story missions push you through the game, and a large number of side quests and additional content can be discovered on or off the beaten path. As side quests scale to your level, so do the rewards. It means even early side quests can be meaningful played late in the game. And it's worth saying side quests aren't fluffy objectives that take place in the same play spaces you've experienced in the main game. They're new, bespoke areas of Enoch that you could miss entirely and they often reveal more secrets about the world and lore. Let's travel quickly to Eagle Peaks, the snow-capped mountains that encase the war zone, to take on a side quest there. Is this your whole company? There used to be more of us. Something happens to the men up in these hills. We hear voices. Some leave and don't come back. Same for anyone who goes looking for them. But... Maybe an altar could have more luck in finding them. Could you lend a hand? All right, let's play detective. If I was a missing soldier wandering off into the night hearing voices, where would I go? Come on! Oh, come on! Don't do this! Uh, I just came looking for my friend! He belongs here now! We all do! Today, the storm welcomes an apostate into its life! So it seems the last remaining survivor of our missing soldiers was just sacrificed to the anomaly? We need to have some words with this deadly cult and its leader. We're only giving you a small taste of this little side adventure. It takes a fair bit longer to make our way into the inner chambers here. And as always, we like to keep some surprises for you. But it's time now for an epic showdown with the altered cultist leader. seems to make people flip their fucking lids. Yeah, nice. By completing the side quest, we can now choose a sweet piece of new gear as a reward. With that sorted, let's talk a little bit more about hops. In hops, your weapons are holstered for a time, and you can soak in a bit of life on Enoch. 
Here you can visit vendors to sell scrap and purchase gear, frequent bars to gather gossip and bounties, uh, call it the liver spinner. and pick up side quests from one of Enoch's many eccentric denizens. What exactly is your business? Certain mercenary services? It's hard to show this without spoilers, but as you progress through the game, the world state and NPC dialogue is affected by pivotal moments from the story and new side quests unlock, some of which are hidden in earlier hubs and play spaces, further rewarding exploration. Combat feats also come with achievements. Complete a collector's quest like a bounty or monster hunt, and NPCs will recognize and reward your triumphs. In bringing to life a new sci-fi universe, we are adamant that these settled areas feel dynamic and alive. Oh, and if Monster Hunts pique your interest, stay tuned for a future broadcast to learn more about them. Well, this should be interesting. Crucially, hubs also allow you to check in on your Outriders truck and crew, which will grow as you progress throughout the game. We're going to talk more about the Outriders truck in the future, but its primary function is to transport you through the world, bringing many of the features of a town with it. All the functionality you'd expect from a hub hits the road with you. Your weapon vendor, your crafting, your crew. The truck is a moving RPG village. Now you don't operate the truck yourself. That job falls to your driver, Jakob, who we will talk more about later. But the customization options are vast, so you can personalize your ride along your journey. Okay, let's pack up and hit the road now. I need to head to the forest to continue my journey. Let's take a quick moment to introduce the crew. Your rider dies accompanying you on your quest to discover the source of the signal. Here we can see Jakob, who drives the truck and can handle any customization of the vehicle. Jakob was with your outrider during the first arrival on Enoch, 30 years prior. A bright-eyed youth with an exciting life ahead of him on a new planet. Time has not been kind to poor Jakob. Here's Sahidi, who we met in the last broadcast. One of the few people on Enoch with a grasp on science and how to get mankind out of the pickle they happen to find themselves in. You can talk to Sahidi for weapon mods and crafting. We'll be talking more about this topic in the next broadcast. Finally, at least for the moment, there's Bailey, who's been appointed to your team by Corrigan the Grand Marshal of Trenchtown, who's allowed your travel through the various sectors of the settlement. Let's go. Bailey hates the arrangement as much as you do, but is forced to join the journey. In camps like this, Bailey also acts as a gear vendor, with a host of unique weapons and armor you can trade for scrap. Other notable features of a given camp? Your stash, where you can store and withdraw equipment that you might not be able to hold on your person. The stash also allows you to move gear freely between your roster of player-built characters. Next to the hammer gear, you'll always be able to change and customize the look of your Outrider. And of course the matchmaking terminal, which is hopefully self-explanatory. Before I'm leaving you for this month's broadcast, I'm going to take you beyond the safe confines of the forest enclave. It's a beautiful night, so let's head out there and explore. Hey, do you remember my tunes I used to play? Like it was yesterday. I can still remember some of them. <clears throat> Please stop, Jakob. Please, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Yeah, ja Jakob, I'm disconnecting. Hello, lovely people. Okay, so you just spent the last 40 hours finishing the epic story campaign, build a badass character, and you're pretty confident that you can handle everything this wicked world throws at you. But you're also aware that Outriders is a complete experience, straight out of the box, and doesn't have any life service elements. So, now what? We are not Outriders, we got you. Your job on Enoch is far from over. We don't want to go into any story spoilers, but for reasons that will become clear, mysterious points of interest have appeared across Enoch. New mysteries and stories are all waiting to be discovered, precious resources allowing for even more powerful gear, 
This is the place where advanced players really get to test their skills. It's a vicious but highly addictive post-campaign mode we call Expeditions. Check it out, this is how it works. After finishing the main storyline, you'll find yourself in a new camp. Among some other additions, you will notice a new station, with a map showing many new areas for you to explore. Oh and yes, it's pretty important to point out that you won't play any recycled content from the main campaign. Expeditions are big, handcrafted new levels, with their own mechanics, challenges and storyline. Before you start an expedition, you will notice the introduction of challenge tiers. It's pretty straightforward. The faster you are able to clear a mission, the richer the rewards. One important thing has changed though. You won't get any direct loot from your enemies. Instead you'll receive all your rewards at the end of an expedition. If you manage to complete it. Don't worry though. We won't leave you completely empty handed even if you fail all your attempts. In this example, you can score a good chunk of epic and rare loot, plus free new tiers. That's because we picked the highest at this moment available tier. You can always go lower to one of the previous unlocked tiers, if you feel your strategy or build isn't quite ready yet. To be more precise, your newly earned tiers are needed for two things. First, tiers progression unlocks new locations for your team to discover. Unlocking all 15 of them will grant you access to the final expedition, the Eye of the Storm. Second, and similar to our world tier system, selected challenge tiers also determine the difficulty of a mission. Here's the kicker. When we release Outriders, your maximum character level is 30, but your weapons and gear can reach up to level 50 in expeditions. Choosing a challenge tier level will show you the expected enemy level, which is also the same level range of the loot you will receive at the end of a mission. So before you head into an expedition, make sure to adjust your strategy and equipment accordingly. There's no other way to go about this. Expeditions are tough. No wait, let me rephrase that. Expeditions are brutal, but for good reason. This content is intended for battle-hardened outriders, who really want to get creative with the nitty and gritty details of specialized character builds. Feeling like a well-tuned demigod? Then this is the place for you. But you might want to bring some demigod co-op friends along as well. You'll need them. No matter how strong and well trained you think you are when you head into expeditions for the first time, you will need to become much more if you want to even reach the ultimate challenge. Stoked yet? Good. Before we dive more into expeditions though, we must first touch on another exciting subject that is heavily linked to this game mode. It's one of the most compelling and important core features of Outriders. Modding, crafting and everything in between. Upgrading and modifying your gear is an integral part of Outriders and gives you unparalleled freedom to strive for that perfect build. Dedicated players can experiment with a myriad of combinations to maximize and adapt their effectiveness for any given challenge. It's the foundation for countless hours of fun and in the case of expeditions, even mandatory for survival. Let's talk about mods first. Mods are passive skills that can significantly alter the way your weapons, armor or abilities work. For instance, they can add effects to your gunplay irrespective of your class, sticking your enemy with a nasty status effect like freeze, bleed, weaken, toxic and many more. With rare and specialized mods equipped, you can even get a taste of the powers of a whole different class. For example, Golem's Limp is a legendary shotgun. It will grant its wield the Devastator's Golem skin for 3 seconds after every killing shot. In this case, helping out a Pyromancer. Or maybe you get lucky and find this little gem which takes a page from the Trickster's book about bending time and space. This mod will hit your opponent with a slow effect like the Trickster's melee attack, but here we see a Technomancer making use of it. So broadly speaking, we're looking at two types of mods. General mods, as just described, can be applied to boost or alter how your weapons and armor work. But we also have skill mods, which are class specific. Those bad boys can amplify and change any of your 8 anomaly infused powers per class and can only be applied to armor. Like giving a trickster a second temporal slice. Or how about increasing the damage radius and ammo of your Technomancer's rocket launcher? By equipping the Spike Forest mod, a Devastator is able to stick his worries on much more than just one skewer. All our mods are segmented into three tiers and you're able to collect them by dismantling the found gear that holds them. 
The rarity of a piece will determine what mod tier and amount of mods it might spawn with. Except for our legendary gear, which has dedicated mods that can only be found on these specific items. This would be the mods in the tier 3 category for instance. So far so good. Now here's a really cool thing. Once collected, you can apply and mix match your mods however you want. Let's say you went through hell and back on a challenge, got lucky and walked away of the legendary assault rifle Absolute Zero. Yes, it absolutely wreaks havoc and freezing bullets are awesome. But you know what's even more awesome? Exactly, frozen enemies that get struck by lightning. So let's get to it. Luckily I found a legendary weapon called Thunderbird earlier in the game. And with my much higher level now, I decided to dismantle it and go for the mods. Quick piece of intel though, if a weapon already has two mods slotted, you can only change one of those two mods. Now let's select the ultimate Storm Whip mod, the one we scored earlier from the Thunderbird, and the slot on the weapon with the mod we want to replace. Now all we have to do in order to get this new dream weapon build, is to spend a little of our resources. In this case, 396 iron. Beautiful. And this is just one little example how you can alter and upgrade every single piece of gear in Outriders. So what else can we do in this crafting table? Improve rarity lets us improve the primary parameters of every item that isn't epic or legendary. There's firepower for weapons and armor for your wearables. By the way, hovering over the crafting options will reveal a color code explaining what rarity is needed for each craft. Here we look at Unusual, Rare, Epic and Legendary. Next up, Swap Variant. Here you can alter how your weapon fires and behaves in the field. Each weapon offers different variants depending on the type of weapon. You can unlock even more variants as your character level progresses. And last but not least, Level Up. Which is pretty much as straightforward as it sounds. Similar to improved rarity, raising a level of your equipment will boost firepower or armor. I think it's pretty obvious now. If you're really into tinkering with your equipment, Outriders will give you a lot of creative freedom to do just that. With about 350 individual mods across weapons, armor and skills, players have a lot of possibilities to experiment and home in on that perfect build. Also keep in mind, everything we just saw in the crafting department is directly linked to this. Fine-tuning your skills and equipment in conjunction with the skill tree. A skill tree that you can respec at any time without any cost. And this is where things really get interesting. Makes you wonder how deep this rabbit hole goes, doesn't it? Expeditions will challenge you and your team not only on a skill level, but also on how well your builds are tuned and in sync with another. That's why going deep into customization aspects of Outriders is not only super fun, but also vastly improves your lifespan on Enoch in general. Tune and optimize your skill tree for the challenge ahead and find effective ways to complement the available powers from your Outrider squad mates. Especially when you want to take on higher world tiers in a story campaign for instance. Okay, we covered crafting and upgrading your gear. Let's talk a little bit more about expeditions. As I said in the beginning, all of our expeditions are big, bespoke new levels in the game. And we have 14 of them ready for you to conquer when we ship on February 2nd, 2021. Of course we want to leave the excitement and fun of exploring these new areas for you. But hey, let's take a quick peek, shall we? I've sensed a deep, humming noise reverberating from deep within the forest. It comes and goes, but during our journey it has grown louder. And next to this gate, it is more piercing than ever. Outrider, I need to know the cause of this. Tiago was right about that hum. My teeth are chattering from the vibration. Strange structure. Some kind of switch over there.
Nice view. An obelisk mechanism in the middle. Could be the way forward. I can't wait for you and your friends to face Enoch's ultimate challenges. I hope you liked what you saw and as always, stay safe out there and take care of each other. Sven out.